Hello again, YouTube. Tristan Blaze here, and I'm doing a, another Legacy deck tech. And this is my updated, optimized burn list that I currently run right now in 2014. Uh, I've actually wanted to put this deck list up for a while. It's just been it's it's just been really hectic. I haven't really gotten the uh, chance to do it. You know, with the wife and kids and everything, it's really hard to just you know get the whole place calmed down so I can quietly do a deck tack without somebody interrupting me. So kicking right in with our basic one mana drops, we have our four lightning bolts. Four chain lightnings, four lava spikes, and our four rift bolts. Now, if you don't have any creatures in your opening hand, predominantly I would like a rift bolt suspended on turn one. Just in case my opponent has a creature. Because a lot of times, if you suspend a rift bolt, your opponent's going to either A, hold off on casting a creature, or B, cast a creature that they don't mind losing which does help. I mean, not many people are going to have... Not, I would say this. Not many people are going to go ahead and drop a... a Delver of Secrets if you have a suspended Rift Bolt unless they have a bunch of counter magic to back it up. Now, our creature base, we have our four Goblin Guides, four Vexing Devils, which replace are Keldon Marauders. Now, the reason why I replaced Vexing Devils, or the reason why I replaced Keldon Marauders with the Vexing Devils is uh, when I started playing Enchantress and I played, uh, and I tested Burn against it, I totally forgot to read the card, and I cast Keldon Marauders. Keldon Marauders does not have a You May ability. Keldon Marauders comes into play Leaves play ability is just, it deals one damage. My Enchantress deck is running Leyline of Sanctities in the board, as well as Solitary Confinements in the main. If I can't target the Enchantress player, I gotta deal damage to myself with the uh, Kelvin Marauders, which was a pain in the ass. Now, Vexing Devil is different because it doesn't really target. It says any opponent may have it deal 4 damage to him or her if it does, if that player does sac sacrifice Vexing Devil. So, I get basically either a 4-3 a creature for 1 mana, or I get 4 damage for 1 mana if they just pay the 4 damage, if they just have it deal 4 damage to them. Keldon Marauders, eh, normally with Keldon Marauders is it would be 2 mana, I'd get 1 damage when it came into play, a chump block, and then a damage when it died in left play. Maybe get rid of a nimble mongoose, but predominantly it was just like a chump block. This this can just go right to the dome if my opponent really, really doesn't want to have another one, another creature in play. That's why I like the Vexing Devil. It, it adds a bit more punch to it, and it adds a bit more damage and a little bit more speed. And then, of course, my lovely foil Hellspark Elementals with the Unearth mechanic. This is the only card that actually functions um, with the Graveyard. Uh, so this deck is actually pretty pretty resilient to, like, Grave Hate. I mean, it, all I'll lose is a couple of Hellspark Elementals, that'll be it. And we got our card selection with our Magma Jets. I would say Magma Jet is more of the weakest card in, in the deck, but the ability where I can bottom deck the next two draws of land and find more burn is more than able to make up for just two damage for two mana. And we got our Flame Rifts, and our Price of Progresses, and our Fire Blast. Now, Fire Blast, Fire Blast predominantly, I just, I, I'll, I'll either A, use Fire Blast to remove a problematic creature, um, uh, win a counter ward, remove a, counter, a problematic creature, or multiple Mother of Rune activations to remove, say, like a Thalia or something. 
but you know, predominantly it's either like the finishing blow or problematic creature that makes the game a lot harder as a kill card. Now, price of progress. Some decks, it, some decks you will wreck people consistently with it. Other decks, it's basically just a dead draw. But Legacy is heavy with non-basics, so you really need, really, really need price of progress. It makes, it makes matchups like Legacy Lands, or Affinity, or, let me think, what other decks? Death and Taxes really 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 easier because you can just okay pop them for say 10 really just brings them down to your level and it, it really brings them down with life totals especially legacy lands like I'm, I'm currently building legacy lands and it's going to be a long project but you can I mean a well-timed price of progress against legacy lands can just wreck them beyond belief we got our, our our 18 mountains. Now, when I eventually get to pimping this deck out, I'm replacing all these mountains from Time Spiral with 18 land, 18 mountains from Arabian Nights, which are about 28 bucks a piece. So, share this video so I can actually start pimping out with some Arabian Nights lands in the near future. The sideboard really hasn't changed that much, save for you know one card taken out, one card put in. I got my two, I got my two REBs for those random blue matchups. I only have three Smash to Smithereens for the Artifact Hate, but I added a Sulfuric Vortex. Ever since I started playing Death and Taxes, I've I've noticed that you really need, really really need if you're playing Burn, you need to stop life gain, and this is how you do it. Regardless of the fact that it just deals two damage to your opponent every turn, okay, it's you just stop Batter Skull, you stop Umazawa's Jit, you know, you stop those cards from helping your opponent gain life and prolonging the game. Because the longer the game goes, the harder it's going to be for you to win. Now, I've actually won on turn three with this deck. Predominantly because, you know, it'd be like Vexing Devil turn one, um, then Goblin Guide Lightning Bolt on turn two, which uh, that's nine damage, brought my opponent down to 11. And then it was uh, Hellspark Elemental, cast on turn three, swing with the uh, Hellspark Goblin Guide and the Vexing Devil, which is another nine damage, and then just. Uh, fire blast my opponent by sacking two mountains for the last two points of damage. So I was able to deal 22 points of damage in the first three turns. So obviously the deck is fast, but the problem is the longer the game goes with life gain mechanic or life gain abilities or triggers, the harder it is for you to win. So you need at least at least three copies of Sulfuric Vortex. If you have a heavy, like if you have if you have like if you're playing in an area where there's like three, four death and taxes players, bump it up to four. You're gonna need it. And then we have our flame breaks. I like flame break over volcanic fallout. I mean, fallout can't be countered. Flame break can be countered, but this one deals an extra point of damage. I would rather have that extra one damage dealt so I could wipe out. Um, oh God, what would it be nimble mongoose primarily because I can't target it. But Flame Break is just mass removal for three, three toughness and below. And then, of course, our fairies, obviously, which are, you know, graveyard hate. That's basically it. Predominantly, Burn is a very, very fast deck. To compete with us, um, a graveyard-based deck has to be fast as well. You gotta be doing, you know, uh, LED dredge with dread return flame kin zealot style. You know, you just pump up a crap ton of zombies and swing. You can use Fairy Macabre to take out their bridges, take out their Flamekin, you know, real easily. Most, I don't know any Dredge deck that can really respond to that. I mean, I do know Manalist Dredge Blue can with Force of Wills in the, uh, in the, in, in the deck, but that's... Oh, no, actually, I'm sorry, no, I'm, I'm, I'm totally blanked. 
they can't even respond to it because you're discarding it's an ability they gotta stifle it basically and they can't even do that so yeah I mean they can't respond to it um obviously you have reanimator you would just you know okay fairy macabre you're you know reanimation target you know just get rid of your I don't know what are they gonna run Grizzle Brand, because it's got the lifelink, maybe Blazing Archon, you know, whatever the heck, I don't even know what Reanimator's running right now, I haven't played Reanimator in a while. But that's why the, that's why I chose Fairies instead of uh, traditional, like, mass graveyard hate, like Crypt, or Relic, or maybe even Nile Spellbomb, it's just my deck is uh, trying to win very fast. You know, if I if I can rip a few key cards out of your graveyard just to trip you up long enough for me to deal that final point of damage, that's all I need. So this is my optimized, you know, 2014 burn list right now. And I don't run Grim Lava Mancers. I don't run Fetch Lands. People are going to ask, why don't you do that? I play Dread still. I play four stifle effects. I used to play mono blue pirates back in extended with four stifle effects in in the deck. I literally would just stone and even today in legacy I will stone rain people for one blue and they will not recover. I'm playing 18 land. I really can't I really can't handle losing a land drop on turn one or turn two. I need at least those first two land drops for me to continually burn the hell out of my opponent with my stuff. So, switching to a Grim Lava Mancer fetch land build, it's a viable option, obviously. I have, I have fetch lands, I have Grim Lava Mancers, obviously, but it's not really what I would prefer with this deck. I would prefer to keep this deck as tamper-proof, as um, stifle-proof as possible. Take as much weakness as I possibly can out of the deck. Obviously, the deck is obviously the deck is weak because a good countertop player is going to be able to counter pretty much half of what I play, anyways. But countertop is going to take at least at least three turns to set up and get activated so you got a chance to overwhelm them before they can actually do it so it's 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 a race against the countertop players but this is once again my 2014 burn list maybe two three hundred dollars tops you know and this is legacy it's it's a cheap it's a cheap deck for Legacy, but it's actually going to work. It actually works. You actually have a chance to win. You know? You actually have a chance to go to a Legacy tournament, take top eight with this, or top four. If you're really, really amazing, you could take top one, or if your opponents really, really suck. We've all faced opponents like that. Don't lie. One, we've all faced opponents that really, really sucked. And two, we've all been the opponent at one point in time that really, really sucked. I know what it was like when I was that opponent. God, I had I had like the I had like the you know like twenty land of war elf or like like the like the twenty mana elf twenty land like twenty huge green beef creature deck and it was one wrath of God, boom, you're it was done. It was just like I go cry in a corner because I was like, you know, what was I? Like fourteen, fifteen at the time and didn't know jack about how to play the game. <laughs> So, if you're looking for a cheap legacy deck to get into the format with, this is a good deck. It's, you know, the most expensive card you're going to get is Chain Lightnings. Those are about $12, $13 tops. Everything else, I believe everything else is under 10 bucks. In fact, most of the most of the deck is actually a, a few dollars at most per copy. So, this is a good beginner deck for legacy for an aggro player. If you want to see more decks, more legacy deck tacks, um, I am going to be starting um, a new playlist for Magic the Gathering. These are going to be historic decks. Not historic decks like this was the 98 World Championship deck, this was the 2000, no. Historic decks in terms of what I used to play as a player. 
when I was, say, 16 and it was, like, Tempest and Mirage Block, what was I playing back then? When I was, like, 15 and started actually getting really good at Magic during, like, Ice Age... Was it Ice Age? Was it Ice Age and Mirage Block back then? Or was it... I totally forget what it was back then. But what was I playing back then? What was I playing in Extended in, like, 2000? You know, what was I playing in Extended in, you know, 2003 or something? You know, old decks. Old decks that you basically can't play anywhere but Legacy now because everything rotated out of Extended. It lets you know, one some of the decks I used to play, but it also lets you know why I'm interested in some of the decks I play in Legacy now. So, I'm bringing that out. That's my old school magic uh, playlist, I believe I'm calling it. Look for that, because you're going to have a lot of old school decks. You're going to see a lot of old cards that you probably haven't seen in a very, very long time. And if, you're, uh, if you've played magic for a long time, too, you're going to see a lot of old decks you haven't played in a long time and haven't seen across the table in a long time, and you're going to start to reminisce about how annoying it was to face that deck, probably. Especially when I bring out one of the decks I played during Ice Age, you're going to reminisce about how many times you sat across the table from that guy and just wanted to punch him in the face. For those who know what I'm talking about, put a comment in and we'll see if you're right. This is Tristan Blaze. Like, comment, subscribe, you know, share this video on all social media. And, you know, check out my Facebook if you want to. Check out my Twitter. I just started it, so it's not really, you know, you know, not really a high priority right now for me. It's primarily just getting more deck tacks and more videos out. Especially uh, my videos for gaming, because I want to start doing that on this channel as well. So check out my paper, my Papers, Please playlist. I know it's over a year old, basically. Well, the game is over a year old. The playlist is just brand new because I'm I've started replaying it. But check it out, see if you like it. You know, if you're you know if you don't like it, just say, hey, look, you're not really good at playing games. Stop. But I'm prattling on right now, so I will leave you. You know, predominantly men because you're watching my channel. Predominantly men do, but I'll, I'll leave you boys and girls to do whatever you need. This is Tristan Blades. Thank you.